All right, everybody, today we are gonna be installing this uh, Easy Start back onto our rear unit. We use this rear unit more than we use the front unit. Um, so for right now, we're gonna mount this guy on the back and eventually we'll do one on the front. Now, nice thing about the Micro Air is it only comes with one piece of paper. And I'll show that piece of paper right here. So as we stated before, this is the instructions that come with your micro air qr readers here and you just scan it and it gives you your instructions now you saw that there was that uh qr code on there so you scan that and then it tells you what um application you want to have <laughs> so off of that qr code you'll you'll uh pick your application now this guy here is what they call a low profile Mach 8. Now this one is one of the harder ones to wire one of these guys into. So we're gonna kind of show you the difference between this and then I'll link this video up. Oh wait, no, it's over here. I'll mm -hmm. link this video of what we did on the Solitude that had a Mach 15. Um, big difference on these guys. So we'll try to go step by step and give you a tutorial on how to mount these guys. It is a little over daunting and if you are not comfortable with electrical, just hire somebody out to do it. Now, first and foremost, disconnect your electricity. Okay, we disconnect it off the pedestal and we shut the breaker off just in case. Now, like I said, we were able to print off off of the QR code that came with the instruction paperwork. First thing I did is I took the um, three bolts that are holding this guy in um, and that fan mounts right here. I pulled it out of the way so that I could get to this nut, which is inside of here. This is where we're going to be doing all of our wiring. And then we're going to mount that um, uh, easy start either right here or right here. So I will hand that back to Beth. Now here are your capacitors. This is your run capacitor. This guy's your start capacitor. What you want to do is you want to... Um, basically short those guys out. Best way to do that is with your multimeter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our leads on and then we're just gonna go terminal to terminal to terminal. And that will um, de-energize uh, these guys. So we're gonna put our, our uh, voltmeter or amp gauge, whatever you wanna call it, to volts AC. And what we're gonna do, and normally these guys, and I'll, I'll get that back from Beth again. Normally there's terminals on these guys. These are what they call sealed capacitors. So I'm gonna have to do everything in here on, on the board to de-energize those. Basically it's really simple. Um, the start capacitor is gonna be a yellow. So we're gonna connect to the yellow and then to the red. And that guy is now, de-energized. Now, first step, I'm going to pull off the start capacitor. This unit does not need that start capacitor, so we are going to unhook from one end and... Oh, let's see, first off, I'm going to reach in here and... Oh, here is our yellow from from our start, I traced it back to this guy, and this is our red wire that is gonna come back. And I'll have Beth hold this like so. Um, again, I'm just gonna grab this guy here and pull him. Oh. So this one is what they call a, a piggyback terminal. As you can see, we have a piggyback wire that is run in conjunction with this. So I'm gonna try and pull this guy off of our compressor. I might have to go get a small pair of needle nose to get this guy. Okay, so I've unhooked this red cable from the piggyback here. And this is what they call a HACO connector. Um, you can, they make special pliers for those, but you can just squeeze them together with your um, pliers and you can just pop that out. You can see where this one is in when we pull this one out. The reason we pulled this guy out is because 
we're gonna pull this wire out and we're gonna pull this wire out and then tie them up over here because they won't be used anymore. So that's why we pulled that Haco apart. All right, so we are gonna pull out the red wire from our start capacitor and we're gonna pull out our yellow wire from our start capacitor. And we're gonna kind of pull it out of this mix here and we will just set them aside for right now. We will zip tie those together in this bundle here as we get. So now we will move on to the next step, which is checking to um, checking the white wire from our uh, compressor here, which runs over to this spot here. And now what they want us to do is they want us to unplug this guy here. So I'm gonna hold this board down and we're gonna pull this guy up. We're not gonna get rid of him yet. We're just pulling him up and out of the way. So we're gonna set him here. And, okay, so I took, and this is where I'm gonna mount this guy. It has double-sided sticky tape on the bottom. I ran the wire around and underneath the compressor and came into the same hole as the compressor. There's four leads here. Now, our first step was to unplug this white wire from the compressor and then we plug the white wire from the Easy Start into that same location. Now what we're gonna do is we have to unplug this little black guy right here. This is what they call the PTCR and he just comes out like so. We're gonna take the red wire from the capacitor that we took off, or excuse me, compressor, the red wire from the compressor that we took off of here that had the piggyback for the starter compressor. So we're gonna take this guy completely off. We're gonna set him aside. Now what we have is we have three wires left, okay, from our easy start. We still have this white wire here. What we're gonna do is we are going to connect the white wire with the brown wire, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dike this guy off, like so. And I'm going to take about, oh, yay, off. And Beth is going to hand me a box of our wabbles. I personally like these guys a lot better. I know some people don't like them at all. Um, I'm gonna use a two-point connectors here and we're gonna open them up. We're gonna put our white wire in, make sure we get a nice good snug fit on it. We're gonna take our brown wire and we're gonna put him in as well and give him a nice tug. Now we're gonna take this guy, tuck it back down. So now we have our orange wire and we have our black wire. Our black wire is going to need a terminal end on it as well so we're going to put a terminal on him and crimp him down. All right and I'm just going to put him in here like so. Crimp him down, give him a good tug. And we're gonna kind of move him underneath some of these other wires. Cause this guy is gonna come around and he's gonna plug into where our purple wire is already. So we're gonna slide him down. Make sure that, oops, we get a good connection on our board. All right, which leaves us our um, orange connector. Now, remember we pulled off this uh, start capacitor from this piggyback right here. Hopefully you guys can mm -hmm. see that. Um, pretty simple, we didn't dike that guy off and we are gonna reuse that connector, that piggyback is what they call it, for our orange wire. Now, Everything is all wired together. We're gonna to go through and we're gonna wire tie this stuff back up. We're gonna put our HACO plier back on here, close this all up, and then we're gonna run this through. We have to do, I believe it is five start and run cycles, 
and then you have to wait what was it 10 minutes i think it was six to ten minutes in between each mm -hmm. cycle so this next spot is going to take a while um there are some little led lights in here which i will show you as we're running through this cycle um, but i want to get this all tied up and tidied up before we get to that point so we're going to button this all back together and then we'll run our our cycles to get this ready to go Okay, so we put everything back together. We did zip tie these together. Um, we did have to move this guy, however, um, because it was hitting these supports here. So we moved it over this way. I did move it out a little bit more this way because there's little LEDs. And I'm hoping that when Beth runs the run cycle that I can see those LEDs because that is crucial as the next part that we'll show you here. So. We're going to uh, just double check everything before we go put powering back to this and then we're going to do our startups and run. Okay, so we have the unit running, as you can see. We just started it. We're going to run it for about five minutes. And we're going to shut it off for five minutes, run it for five minutes. We're going to do that about five to eight times until it learns the cycle. Basically what this does is it ramps the compressor up. Instead of just a really hard hit, it gives you a nice slower ramp. It's better on your compressor, it's better on your units, and if you're running off of batteries, and generator, or even 30 amp, this is a way to go. So, this one is probably a little harder than most to install, just because you're not plugging into your capacitor, you're going through the electrical outlet, electrical box and circuit box here, kind of the J-box. So it is a little harder. So we'll run this for about five minutes and then uh, except we'll do this a couple few times and then we'll be done. So on the back of your instructions, it gives you um, trouble codes. We have a 364. So we have the clear cover on there and we have no lights, which is a good thing. We don't want to have any lights showing any faults. And you can see those guys. I'll move that here, right underneath where that sticker is. And that's where you'll find if you have any faults, if you wired it wrong, if you don't have enough voltage, if your capacitor isn't winding up, your compressor is having issues, all that will be in that little um, little LED lights and that will show you on the back of your uh, paper that comes with your Easy Start. All right, so we're in the midst of running our cycles, I thought I would show you the tools that we used for uh, this installation. First, drill. Only thing I used the drill for was to pull off the four mounting bolts of that shroud. Then what we did is we had the um, our amp meter here. We used that to um, dis-energize the capacitors. So I showed you how to do that. Um, 3 eighths nut driver. That was to do all of these little screws down here on the fan and the electrical box. That is also the same as the shroud on this guy. Funny because the front shroud or the yeah the front shroud on the front unit is 10 millimeter. Um, needle nose. I used the needle nose to get off some of these pliers that were stuck onto the circuit board. Crimpers, strippers, self-explanatory. Uh, I used the side dikes for the wire ties. I used one of the uh, angled gauge uh, female terminals. And I used one of these little WAPCOs um, for the wires. Basically, that was it. That was it for the tools that we used. These were the two things that pulled off. We pulled off this, I think it's a PTRC... Um, it's kind of a wind-up. We did a diked off one female, put on a one of these. So really, you don't need a lot of tools to get this job done. Again, if you are not comfortable with wiring of any sort, um, I highly recommend that you 
um, pay a technician to get this done. But if you are inclined, it's a really simple process. Uh, the Mach 8 was definitely a little more, uh, I wouldn't say harder, it was just a little more in depth. The instructions, just like everything, <laughs> I'm guilty of this, but definitely read all the way through the instructions because there's certain steps that um, it says to do, but you don't need to, like um, when you're taking off your start capacitor, if you actually have one on a Mach 8, um, you don't need to take off the piggyback connector because you'll actually use that later on, but it does tell you to take it off. So just kind of read through everything, make sure that you have an understanding before you kind of get um, arms deep into this. But other than that, it's pretty simple. So we're going to finish our uh, run cycles. We haven't had any errors, and we're going to finish that out to learn the easy start, and then we'll be done. So thanks again, guys. I do appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.